Mani Padme Hum Mani Padme Hum Mani Padme Hum Greetings, beloved beings of light. Aloha. I hope this video finds you most healthy, most blessed, and in a state of bliss. This is an introduction video to my following presentation on this powerful upcoming uh, eclipse, solar eclipse, total eclipse on the 8th of April. I spent many hours preparing for this presentation, so I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to try to keep it under two hours. With all the information and data coming in for this most powerful solar eclipse, I could have made the presentation, the transmission, 10 hours long, but I don't want to bore you all, so I'm going to keep it uh, under two hours, hopefully. I haven't recorded it yet, but I've been preparing many hours. There's so much information coming in, and we're looking at this uh, eclipse from many different perspectives, many different philosophies. So we're seeing a lot of symbolism, synchronicity, a lot of different perspectives and perceptions on this uh, very important eclipse coming up. So I want to do something very special for all of you. Now I just want to create a special introduction to this a presentation, a short talk here in this beautiful, powerful portal here. <clears throat> I'm in the Pacific Northwest. You can see I'm surrounded by this beautiful uh, moss, this green energy coming in, of course, in this powerful year of the wood dragon wood and the Chinese philosophy and the Taoist arts is uh, green so we're in this green this flourishing environment on the way here uh, we have Mount St. Helens to the north I'm in uh, Washington and very sacred portal we have the wing nation with us they're going to be transmitting their beautiful energy. So I was blasted on the way here by the, the majestic peak of Mount St. Helens, that white, beautiful peak. It's a very clear day. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. You know, it's such a beautiful day. Ah, the weather shifting, the energy shifting. So I wanted to briefly talk about this path, this path of this, the totality of the solar eclipse going through uh, North America, Mexico, through the United States, up into Canada. It's very interesting as I researched, oh, we have Walela that just come. She's flying all around me. Walela is a, a sister of a representation of the sacred condor. My sacred condor is my Walela, Alela. Uh, this the path when you see the path so we have the the coming eclipse that's coming from the southwest up into the northeast and it's going to travel through uh, where I spent most of my life in Ohio uh, through the 216 I'll cover this in the presentation but what was very interesting the path of the the totality of the solar eclipse 2017 you see my queen was in southern Oregon for that uh, for that eclipse. The 2017 is when the the timeline of the eagle and the condor came together through that eclipse. And I'm going to talk about the path. Those that have been following my channel for some time know little piece of my story, which I'm going to cover a piece of what brought me, how the eagle and condor, how my sacred goddess and I uh, come together how we reunited in this timeline, in this realm. So you're going to see the path in the presentation from the 2017, which went from the northwest to the southeast. See, it's creating this X. It is actually a T that's, or a cross that's turned sideways. You know, X, the uh, Roman numeral 10. So we're going to see, you're going to see the path that I took back to my condor you see in uh, 2011 is when I 
started training with the gold dragon masters of the Kunlun lineage. You see, if you follow my channel, you'll know I've spent, I trained with many masters since I was 17 years old. Over the last 33 years, I've trained and taught. I've trained with many masters and I've had many students over the years in these spiritual arts. One thing I've wanted to talk about too, we have uh, Mount St. Helens to the north. She blasted me with her beautiful energy, that white peak. So you're going to receive some of that energy through this transmission. I'll be transmitting her beautiful, powerful divine goddess energy and over here to so that's to the north, we have Helens, and to the south, over here, a few miles down the road, is the mighty Columbia. Now, I've been to many rivers throughout the United States, from the Rio Grande to the Mississippi. I've been to where the Colorado, the mighty Colorado River begins. It was just a little stream, the Mount Rocky Mountains, and I've been to the Cuyahoga, Mississippi. The Columbia is one of the most beautiful, powerful, majestic rivers that I've ever been to. So we're bringing in that energy. We have Mount Hood also to the southeast of where I'm right here in the spot. So I'm in between the Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, and the Columbia is surrounding here. So that powerful, this is creating a very powerful vortex here. So you'll feel the energy. We have beautiful mosses and evergreen surrounding us. So feel into this energy. So in 2011, beginning in around 1990, 91 is when I started training with the Zen masters. So I've trained with many uh, rainbow body masters and the gold dragon lineage is returnable rainbow body. So I trained in the, with the Zen Buddhists, the Taoist, uh, the Hindu, many shamans, healers, and sages. So I put that together into what I teach in my works here online. So in 2011 is when I met the Gold Dragon Master and one of my Sifus, one of my Qigong teachers, he and I trained with the Gold Dragon Master at the time in the Taoist lineage of Kunlun. It's the water path, divine feminine. See, I've trained in the fire path of martial arts through the Shaolin, through the Mao Shan, through the, the Damak, many different martial arts. This is the right hand path of Mars, of the fire. Then I've come together with the water, the blue hand path the left hand. So these come together, the a condor and the eagle in the middle, the middle path of the Buddha. You see Shakyamuni Buddha, he started the wheel. You know, Lord Gautama, the Buddha of this timeline, turned the wheel of Dharma, of truth. And we keep this wheel turning with our knowledge, with our teachings, with our transmissions our Dharma talks. You see Shakyamuni started that wheel turning to free humanity over 2,500 years ago and the wheel just keeps on turning. You cannot stop the wheel of truth for you are the truth. So the in 2011 I was in Portland, Oregon with one of my Sifus training in this, this bamboo forest at one of our friends dojo. Some of you know might know Jeff and Janice Godfrey that had the center in Portland. So that was the first time I've ever been to Portland. And in 2011, my sacred condo was right outside the area. So our energies were already merging in 2011. We didn't connect. I didn't even know she was in this realm till, until uh, 2020. <laughs> We've been together now three years in this powerful portal. Uh, transmitting the energy of the divine union of the Heros Gamos, some call twin flame. We call a blazing glory of pure love and light. See, we're anchoring in the divine union codes for all of you. See, nature's Mother Nature, Mother Earth is transmitting to you now. I heard it in my right ear. See, the call of the dragon, the call of the tiger. Be silent for a moment to take on the energy of this area. And 
This is Gaia is saying, live from your heart, be connected, you're being lit up, you're surrounded by the Divine Cosmic Mother. The Goddess has returned, she has risen. Mother Earth has risen, our Cosmic Mother. The womb energy is being activated, fully rising up. So in 2011, I trained with Gold Dragon Master, then I became an apprentice. See, he's one of the most powerful sorcerers of this realm. Uh, the, Ching Feng Dao Shi was his name. Uh, I mean, pure wind man of the Dao and his divine counterpart, uh, Diana Dao Shi. Uh, Dao Shi is the divine goddess, divine feminine of the Dao. The Dao means the way, you know, the way, the truth, the light. Sifu now goes by Mujin Roshi. Mujin Roshi. Roshi is Japanese for master, Zen master. Zen meaning meditation in Japanese. So 2011, I was in Portland, very close to my sacred condor and energy. But it wasn't until 2017, August, when the eclipse, the first eclipse came through that our timelines merged. 2012, I trained with Sifu, the gold dragon in Mount Shasta, in a powerful portal, just north of Shasta. We spent energy. So I, my whole life, I wanted to go to Shasta since I was a child when I was young, you know, 17, 18. I used to get the Dharma talks from the master of uh, Shasta Abbey. And when we were in Shasta, Sifu, one of my teachers and I, I went to the Abbey. You know, the Shasta Abbey is a Buddhist temple on Mount Shasta. Beautiful place. See, I've been to many temples, many churches from all lineages, from the Christian to the Buddhist. I trained in temple and monastery, Buddhist monastery. You see, my whole life, nature has been my temple. You know, the, I see the beauty and the architecture of, that man has created, yes, but I feel I'm at the most peace, the most connected to Source Creator, feel the connection at the deepest level in nature. Nature is my church, is my temple. That's why I go to nature as often as I can. And you see my love and the photos. I've been taking hundreds of thousands of photos since I was probably 12 years old. It was published in Birds and Blooms, different magazines back in the 90s, and then all digital killed the stock industry, so <laughs> I had to find other work, but uh, that's besides the point. That's a story for another day. <clears throat> so to 2012, trained with uh, the Sifu, the shaman, you know, the, the gold dragon master in Shasta, and then 2013, Sedona. Sedona, Arizona. I always wanted to go to Sedona too. So you see that path from Portland, Shasta, Sedona. That's a path I followed back to get to my sacred condor. I had to open those portals back up. You see the dragon masters open the portals for the eagle and the condor to come together and to empower this vessel. You know, they transmitted the gold energy of Buddha of Buddha mind. All the masters are with us now, all the masters I train with preparing me for this great ascension mission. So we're seeing this eclipse. Uh, we don't know, you know the full culmination of this eclipse or what's totally going to come out of it, but we feel like we are right on the precipice. Those that follow my channel know that we are the event. You know, this event is the awakening of human consciousness. And we feel, you know, the symbolism, the synchronicity, the signs coming through, you know, the astrology, the celestial events, all these things for this eclipse. You know, we're seeing also the, with the third, which I'll cover in the video, there's a third eclipse that is connected to this one in August that creates what looks like an A for Alpha. And then the Omega is in the T, which is the X, the X and O. <laughs> the X, which is the one, it's the 10, but reduced to one in numerology. So the one and the zero, the one and the zero, the zero divine feminine, one divine masculine. 
So you're going to see also the, the path of the first eclipse 2017 that come down through uh, North America and this one that's coming up north. So this will pass through the 216, 6 times 6 times 6, where I lived most of my life. See, I was in the opposite of each, living in the opposite location of each totality. You see, in 2017, I was in the 216 area when my queen was anchoring in the codes and the energies here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, in the 2018, I'm in the opposite side. <laughs> you know, it's going to go up where I spent most of my life. So I, it's the reverse. You know, we're, we're reverse. We're turning right side up. You know, what was upside down to the right way in truth. So you're going to see in the presentation these two eclipses together. They actually, the path I took uh, from Cleveland down through uh, Illinois, Missouri, into Texas, you're going to see that as the exact path, almost exactly, where the totality is the path I took down through Texas, up through Arizona, you know, California, following the path back up to Oregon, up to Washington. So it actually creates like a U or a V. See, this is V, victory to the light, victory to love. This is the path that I took. You know, following Source Creator, you know, following the intuition, following the guidance I just spent at this preserve down the road about an hour with one of my totem animals, one of my spirit guides, or the spirit animals I've worked with most of my life, the great blue heron. I'll try to put some videos I took and pictures in the following uh, video, the following presentation, but the transmission of the powerful great blue heron has always been one of my totems. I've had many totems, uh, spirit animals that I've worked with since I was a child. You know, from the dragonflies to the great apes to the elephant nation to the horse nation. Those that watched my video on Patreon saw my journey to the, my queen where I connected with the wild horses in Death Valley. That was one of the most powerful moments in my life. And the queen of the horses, that white stallion, walked right up to me in the wild and we bowed together and she gave me a way out. She said, you, you're done. You've done your work. You can return home source. I said, no, angel of the light, beautiful angel, I must get to my queen. You know, I must fulfill this mission, you know, finalize this mission of planetary liberation. And that's what we're doing together. You know, we can't do this work without all of you. I tell you this on a daily basis, you know, with your support, you know, your spiritual support, your energetic support, your financial support, you know, you can connect with us. Uh, if you'd like to support us, eaglelovecondor.com. So you're, we're going to see in the following presentation this path that's going to create, there is actually a trinity which creates the A for Alpha or Aleph. Alpha in the Greek, Aleph in the ancient Hebrew, which means the beginning. This is the beginning of the new earth. We are on the new earth, but we're still resolving perfectly with the unborn mind of Buddha. All interference patterns, we resolve all things in the pure awareness of Buddha mind. You know, this is the true teaching that I transmit to all of you. Mind to mind, heart to heart. This is pure awareness, pure light, pure love of infinite source creator, which you are, you are one with. You know, once you realize your I am presence, you realize that this was all a simulated reality, all a game. You know, when you realize your true nature, you realize that I am that I am. <laughs> that's it. You know, that's everything <laughs> beyond all concepts. So we're going to see the Alpha Aleph into the Omega, the Tav in the, the, uh, the Hebrew. It's the omega, beginning and end. You see the end shifts to the new beginning. And we're going to see, we're seeing that through these celestial events, through these earthly events, you know, as, as humanity is waking up, this is the flowering of human consciousness, the winged nations surrounding us now. 
Many of our wing nation are with us to join us in this great celebration, this great ceremony of life. So we're seeing that this eclipse is going to be a powerful catalyst. We don't know the full uh, energies that are going to come out of this, the full manifestation, but we know we are on the precipice. We have reached critical mass. Now it is up to us to keep rising, to keep holding our visions of the new earth, to keep holding our love, you know, transmitting with an open heart, open mind into this quantum field this quantum field of pure energy to lift this realm into 5D and beyond into the new earth. So this eclipse is going to help us, you know, the symbolism, the energy we know outside of all assumptions and perceptions that these eclipses and celestial events are powerful catalysts for change. And we see this through history and through time. If you just do the research, and we'll put some of that out into the following presentation. I'm going to do the best I can to transmit the highest knowledge, the gnosis, the truth to all of you through the following presentation. So let us know in the comments your, you know, what you're perceiving, what you're experiencing, what you're feeling through these eclipses. We have another eclipse coming up. I don't know when I'll be putting this video out. I have a lot of work ahead of me. Uh, this is just the introductory and then following this will be my presentation on the symbolism, the synchronicities, and the astrology of this coming eclipse, April 8th, 2024. So it's coming quick. So we feel that this is going to be a catalyst for the new beginning of what we call the new earth. You know, it's just going to help enhance our psychic abilities, our spiritual abilities. We call CDs. CDs are uh, spiritual gifts, spiritual abilities. So we're feeling these being activated in our vessel, in our hearts, in our minds. So keep rising up. The sun is glorious today. The power of the Christos coming in, the Christos Sophia from the earth into the heavens, into the middle. You know, we are the rainbow bridges the new heaven upon the new earth. We're bridging heaven and earth through our sacred heart center. So enjoy the presentation. Have a most beautiful, blessed, sacred eclipse portal. The eagle and the condor send you so much love, blessings, and bliss in the light. Aho, mahalo, shalom, in la ketch alakin. We bring all cultures, all nations together unto one banner of peace the banner of harmony, the banner of truth, and of love. Namaste. Namaste, blessed beings of the light. Let's get this party started. We have a total solar eclipse, April 8th, 2024. I'm sure you've all heard about it by now. Let me come over here and shrink down my image here. So my face ain't covering the screen here for this presentation. So like I said, we've been, I've spent many, many hours uh, compiling all the information for this bit video. I'm going to uh, just let the information flow. This is, I compiled all this on my website, primedisclosure.com which I'll put a link in the description below. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new. So we have here total solar eclipse coming up through Mexico into the United States and Canada, April 8th. And here we have an image here from uh, usdebtclock.org. Turn on to the new kingdom. You see we're seeing, and you can see the X over the United States, uh, North America. Here, this is an image of the what is coming for our new kingdom. You know, this is what we talk about on this channel, the new earth, the new kingdom, who is like the Lord our God who dwelleth on high, on the most high. You see, you know, the path of the 2017 eclipse, and then we have the path of the coming April 8th, 2024, in Aries, and we see these this alignment, the sun with these planets we have and the moon here 
this one, two, three, four. So we have five planets, moon, sun, conjunction, Chiron, and we have two constellations here. So you see the, the eye, the eye of the needle, the eye of the storm, the all-seeing eye. This is the vesica Pisces. Pisces the fish, we're shifting from a Pisces season into the age of Aquarius or Pisces, the age of Pisces. You see the X in the middle. The X marks the spot. The X is a portal. You know, it's a cross turned sideways. The Tau, the Tau cross. You see the Tau is the Tav, which we're going to cover in this video today. And you see the I O Y Y Yahweh. This is the I O, the Eosus, the Eosus is, you know, the Christos consciousness that is returning to this realm from the Most High through the hearts of all our good people of the new earth. Liberty, justice, on. You see the on. This is <laughs> turning, you know, flipping the switch, turning it on. You know, the, the energies, you know, the consciousness, the pure consciousness, the pure awareness. So usdebtclock.org allegedly is run by the White Hats, the Earth Alliance. See, this is actually the debt clock. This fake debt clock of the United States. You can see the. Uh, this is all the di different U.S. total debt, 97 trillion. You know it's fake. You know it's obviously this is what they're putting out to the world, to the public, to keep people in this system of control, to keep people believing that you know money still exists, even though it's all ones and zeros on, on a computer, you know, mainframe. <laughs> so we have up here. You can see. So the different debts coming tax or income tax, da da da, so so forth, social security. But up here in the right open secret window, you can see that they this takes you to this image that I found here on X. You know, we're gonna see a lot of X. X is the Roman numeral ten, which we're gonna get into in this video here. We have a lot to cover here. I'm going to try to keep this under two hours. Like I said, this uh, this video could be ten hours with all the information coming in, coming through. So we see this con these two constellations and alignments. This looks kind of like Leo. Not sure. Uh, let us know in the comments if you know the constellations. Well, I know a little bit about the constellations. This looks maybe Virgo or Ursa Major. I try to find these in. So Leo, it would make sense if it was Vir Virgo, the Virgin, the Virgin, the Divine Goddess, the Divine uh, Mother Energy, the Feminine, Divine Feminine with the Lion Kingdom, a uh, Leo Lion, a lot of uh, Lion Energy, 8, April 8th on this 8th year. So we have the 8-8, eight, eight, you know, every year, August 8th, the Lion's Gate Portal. But this energy is coming in strong and the Lion is considered, you know, the the children of God, the children of Source, the Great Spirit, the, our spiritual warriors on Earth, and our Lion Kingdom, uh, the feline nation of Lyra, the Lyra nation. So this symbolizes many, many things here. So the New Kingdom is what we call the New Earth, the New Eden, New Jerusalem, see Salem, Shalom in Hebrew, peace. You know, this is the kingdom of peace coming to earth. This is merging heaven and earth together. So we have this image, uh, metonic total solar eclipse cycle over the earth. And you can see these X's or the T, the Tav, the Tao. See, the, in uh, Chinese philosophy, Taoist, we say Tao, T-A-O. But in Chinese language, Mandarin, the T is like a D. So Taoism, you know, we say the Taoist. Tao means the way. It's been translated as the way. And ancient, uh, the cross, you know, the cross, uh, the four directions, also the the Tau cross, which we're going to get into that. And the middle, you know, this is the middle, it also symbolizes the human body, the wood element. We're in the year of the wood dragon, the green, <laughs> the, the wood dragon in the Chinese uh, year of the dragon. So you can see over North America here, this is what we're covering here you could see africa into saudi arabia this is in 2027 2034 this is egypt here and you're going to see in this video this is crossing the crossroads the center point is over little egypt in the united states 
and it's connected with the arch in St. Louis and the new Madrid fault line gets you over Australia to X's here. So this is also uh, very significant because this is uh, canceling out the false. You see <clears throat> the X symbolizes, you know, canceling out or denying, letting go of the false ones, the false spring equinox, metonic total solar eclipse cycle, 2015 to 2034. So this is very significant. This is from EclipseWitness.com. The April 8th eclipse also lands during Aries season, of course. It's what we're talking about tomorrow, the 19th, or today when I'm putting this video out. 19 is the equinox where the sun is halfway between its journey between the Tropic of Capricorn, the Tropic of Cancer, a halfway point in its journey north and south every year. So uh, when the sun travels through the zodiac sign for four weeks, we all feel its energy. The moon, sun, and Chiron are all lining up conjunction in Aries, the sign of the warrior and transcendent leader. So this is our new earth leaders rising up. You know, this is our good people of the new earth taking back this world, taking back consciousness. And you can see here, this is the A forming between, the, there's three eclipses we're looking at the two main ones set 2017 2024 but you add in the eclipse of october 14th 2023 creates this a which we're going to get into uh, depth much more depth of the a the alpha you see this is the alpha into the omega the alpha is new beginning you know the first the alpha or the aleph in hebrew alpha in greek alpha is the beginning it's number one so you know, gematria, the Bibles, you know, the Old Testament, the New Testament, uh, and the Islamic, the Quran, all these were encoded by the intelligentsia, the, the Gnostics, those of knowledge, the Gnosis, gematria is the ancient language, all had gematria. Gematria is the numbers behind the letters. You see, Alpha A uh, is number one, you see, and then so forth, you know, Beta 2. You know, Omega was the end. You know, so we're going to cover this Alpha into the Omega, uh, the Tav, the the Tau, of, of the um, <clears throat> the Tav of the the Hebrew, <laughs> the Hebrew language is the end, just like Omega in the Greek. So we have San Antonio here, where this this cross happens here, or the X from the twenty three to the twenty four. And then here, Little Egypt, I believe in Illinois. And then here we have another cross, Bend, Oregon. This is where I, my sacred condor was in 2017. I was here in 2017, right where this, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, this, you know, the 216 Lakewood, which is a suburb of Cleveland. I was born in Cleveland Heights. And I spent, I was raised, lived most of my life there up until about three years ago. I moved out here where, you know, the 2017 where my sacred condor lives. Uh, so we could reunite and you'll see uh, this path here coming down into this V shape. It was more of a U. This is the exact path, almost exactly that I traveled to return, to become one, to unite in divine union <clears throat> with my sacred condor. So I traveled down here through Ohio uh, into, you know, Illinois, Missouri, you know, Oklahoma, Texas, up here through New Mexico, Arizona. I t stopped in uh, Death Valley here and then traveled up through uh, Nevada, parts of Nevada, up through to Shasta. So I, I followed the portals, like I said in the beginning, the gold dragons opened these portals for the eagle and the condor to come together for this final mission of planetary liberation it began in portland down into shasta and then sedona back up into cleveland i had to follow that path back you know it was like reversing the water wheel reversing it's turning what is upside down to make it right the right side up we call truth so i journey down through here and then back up so it's following these two paths exactly the 2023 october 14th uh, and this coming eclipse 
So we're just going to see the totality follows, you know, total darkness through this in the 216, as I've said in the past, in past videos, 6 times 6 times 6. And my family, most of my family is still there. My mother's in the 216. So we're going to send a lot of prayers, a lot of blessings into this area because it's very, it's, it's a hub. It's a portal. So it was a very dark portal. We're going to turn to light, uh, darkness into light. This is the alpha, the new beginning. You see, we're transforming the dark, the false, into truth, into love, into the light. So the cross over here, right in the middle, we're going to cover this too, what they call Little Egypt. So from the real Kim Shady, <laughs> end of the world, you know, symbolically end of the world, 2012, December 21st, 2012, to the eclipse, we have the 1111 portal. See, she has there flipped the switch. You know, this is symbolic of turning on the quantum systems, turning on, you know, switching over from the malevolent, uh, deceptive ones, we call the nefarious ones, to those of benevolence, of truth, of love. So from Friday, December 21st, 2012, to Monday, April 8th, 2024, is 11 years, 110 days, 1111, this 1111 gateway, very powerful. And from Richard K. Jones, some of this information I got from X, some from websites, from, from other social media, some people sent me stuff. So this is a sheriff, Richard K. Jones of Butler County, as you can see here, this totality moving. See uh, Cleveland here, Lakewood's right here on the lake. That's where I lived, 216 area code, uh, for most of my life until I moved out here. So you see it coming up through Dayton. I have many, uh, my cousins, my aunt lived in Dayton many years. It's by Cincinnati over here. The Serpent Mound is down over here. This is what we call the Ohio Valley. Um, they believe a meteor hit there and uh, it formed this valley. And you have the Ohio River here. So it's coming up through Mansfield, another, Mansfield, another dark, portal there we had several of our friends and people in the prison there uh, in the past so that that's been shut down because so many dark nefarious things it was uh, even too crazy for a prison so we have sandusky which is a beautiful portal too we have the the islands like kelly's island up here we have the glacial grooves and you know cleveland akron you know, Wooster, Ohio, up into Ashtabula, my sister's up in this area, my sister Victoria, so we're, we're holding the light for our people that are still in this area, anchoring in the, the codes, the angelic codes, our, our light workers, see, I'm, I'm getting the chills here, because I, this, the power coming in, the veil is lifting, this is uh, turning dark to light, so unless you're living on another planet, there's a good chance you already know that several U.S. states will experience a total solar eclipse April 8, 2024. So Butler County, Ohio, coincidental, yes, but Butler's not my real ass name. Some of you know, know my real name, my birth name. I, I keep it, you know, Butler was the name of a psychopath that took us from our father, but that's a story for another day. So Butler County, Ohio, will experience a partial eclipse starting just before 2 p.m., and totality will begin at approximately 3.08 p.m. local time. The totality will last approximately three minutes. A partial eclipse will then follow and continue until 4 p.m. On average, a total solar eclipse happens somewhere on Earth once every 1.5 years, and only 21 total solar eclipses have crossed over the lower 48 states in the entire existence of the United States. The last total solar eclipse visible in Ohio was in 1806. Oh, daddy in Ohio, you know. <laughs> we had that uh, nefarious act when they killed those kids at um, Kent State University. You know, they shot those kids during the Vietnam War. My aunt, uh, Nancy Fry, was there. She's passed on to the other side. She's working with us. She was an amazing artist, but she was there at that event in Kent State when those kids got shot. I believe it was the National Guard. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, as I've told you in the past, Cleveland itself, Columbus, is another hub of nefarious activities, uh, human trafficking, all these things. Cleveland is the hub of the mafia, you know, which maybe I'll do another video about that one day. But we have uh, 
many nefarious things that have gone over over time but we're clearing these patterns and clearing these traumas the next total solar eclipse in ohio will be 2099 so there's our 99 code 9910 <clears throat> So we have Finley, Finley, Ohio. I met the Dalai Lama there back in 1991 during a Buddhist event when I was training with the, in the Zen Shin Sangha, Zen Buddhism, with uh, Sensei Ogoi and uh, several other Zen masters. From Derek Bros, one of our Brothors of the Light, posted this. This chat just happens to be the exact same path as the upcoming eclipse. So you see this very strange event that happened a couple days ago, uh, Noah Berggren. This is actually bizarre, and I'm not just saying that. This will be one of the more notable severe storm nights in March in recent memory. I think he's a newscaster. Yeah, Fox uh, 35 News. Check this out. See, 99, the 10 degree, we have this 99 code. And uh, Mongolian shamanism, I trained with a Mongolian shaman for many years, and Taoist master, Ching Fong Dao Shur, that uh, he would teach us the 10, there's 99, 10 degree. These are sky beings, the most powerful, the thunder beings, the thunder and lightning beings. The Native Americans also teach about the, the thunder beings. This is one of the most powerful phenomena of nature is thunder and lightning so we had in the past hour over 16,000 individual lightning bolts from western new york to northeast texas spanning over 1200 miles and check this out this was um feeling the chills coming up again this is almost the exact path of the totality of the the coming eclipses look at the storm you know the ten gri are with us now the thunder beings are the Sifu say that the, uh, we have a cool little skull here, Jade, I believe this is like Jade, and the skull and the turtle are with us. We have many friends with us. The Oregon Pyramid and beautiful Amethyst here. And then this is from Blue Wolf from Shasta, our brother from Mount Shasta, Blue Crystal, beautiful crystal. The energies are just pumping in now. Feel it. Let it let it fill your body with higher dimensional light. So the 9910 greed we say connect uh, the shaman to source, to source creator, God, whatever name you want to call the great mystery. We call it Wakantanka. So hear from the Patriot voice, one of our patriots, one of our people bringing out information. The upcoming solar eclipse on April 8th is going to be mind-blowing and biblical that's what everyone's seeing they, these prophecies come into fruition this is going to be one of the most uh, powerful celestial events of our lifetime we don't know how this is going to play out but we do know this is catalyst for great change and for our great awakening and for our good people to rise up in conjunction with the solar eclipse that happened on august 2017 that spanned over the whole u.s over many towns with the name salem Shalom, uh, the town of Jerusalem, we say Jerusalem, was originally just Salem. This time the path of totality will follow over many towns in the U.S. called Nineveh, Nineveh, making an X. What's most interesting here is that the way the eclipse takes this time will coincide with a series of biblical named towns, Cross, Elijah, one of my nephew's names, Enoch. Blood, Groom, Israel, Jonah, Nineveh, Noah, and Rapture. These are the different towns, coincidentally. No, there's no coincidences. This is synchronicity. These are omens from the Great Spirit, from God, Source Creator, Mother, Father, God, Prime Creator. Interestingly, Rapture, Indiana, is the center point of the X, which is very close where we're going to cover. Makanda also is right in the center of this X where both eclipse paths will have crossed. But it gets even more wild. The way that the planets in our solar system will line up during this 2024 eclipse represents a literal ladder to Christ, based on the names of the constellations. Is the eclipse of 2024 a foreshadowing of the rapture when God takes his faithful home? Get right with God. So the X crosses over East St. Louis, the arch. I was up in the arch 
uh, back in 1984, I was 11 with my friend and his parents, the Kesslers. You know, we went up in the arch. It was the first time I was ever out of Cleveland. You see, my family was too poor to go anywhere, so I had the the um, opportunity as a child that my friend and his good parents uh, took me on this month-long journey down to the Southwest. And I was taken to the Navajo uh, to heal me and uh, that's a story for another day, but um, that was my first connection with our native people on a, a physical level. I've connected with our uh, the spirit of our native nations of all nations since I was came into this realm. But that was the first of many experiences with our our Native American angels of the light. So the uh, the arch in St. Louis, the dumb stargate deep underground military base, I guess. I'm not familiar with that one. And Little Egypt, it's called. <clears throat> so we can take a look here. Of Nineveh. Nineveh is uh, an ancient Assyrian city of Upper Mesopotamia located in modern-day city of Mosul in Iraq. Iraq. You see, the I in Arabic is pronounced like an E, A, always A, ah, like Baba, Iraq. People say Iraq. No, it's Iraq, just like in uh, Greek and in the Mayan, I is always E, like Iesus, who people change the I, you know, the Jesuits or whomever. In the research I've done, the I of Iesus from ancient Greek was changed to a J. Now people say Jesus. Uh, about 400 years ago, and I believe it was the Jesuits that's right around the same time in this area of Italy, you know, this Roman area, you know, language of uh, of the, the Jesuits. See, the Jesuits uh, were like the military of the Vatican. They called the Black Pope. It's a story for another day again. Uh, what was Nineveh known for in the Bible? Uh, Mesopotamia between uh, 3000 to 612 BCE uh, is a site of sin and depravity known as a great cultural and religious center that is symbolizing repenting. The dark ones must repent. We told them many years ago to cease and desist in nefarious acts. They did not listen. They did not listen. They did not know how. Perhaps they'll listen now. Starry, starry night. I was obsessed with Van Gogh's Starry Starry Night. When I was six years old, I did my own rendition in oil pastels. At, from MVP area in southern Illinois, that we'll see a full solar eclipse the second time around. So this, you see here, is the exact, exact crossroads. So I'm just going to keep flowing with this. We have a lot of information to cover. I'm trying to keep this as linear as possible, but I'm tapping into my higher self source creator so information's flowing through i'm staying anchored in this now but as the information comes in and higher gnosis i'll be transmitting it to you and i i line this up as linear as i could <laughs> because there's so much different information coming from different sources so hopefully this is congruent enough for all of you to follow so stick with me we have a lot more to cover a lot of interesting things so stick around to the end. We have some, some very special things. And so we have here, uh, here in the center, the exact center where the two cross over. It's a pretty big area. Uh, Sparta, you know, that was ancient uh, Greek. Saint Francois of France, or French, of uh, Carbondale. And this is, you know, Kentucky, Missouri, Illinois area. Over here, you can see this, it's uh, like a rectangle here. This is the exact crossroads, the crossover, the zero point. Uh, this is from Q, Q Storm on uh, X. You know, we call X now, no coincidence here. Alert, over a trillion cicadas are emerging for the first time since 1803, creating a once-in-a-lifetime spectacle. They've spent 17 years underground, uh, I understand there's that number again, 17, of course, <laughs> the Q, the Quele, the source. Uh, remind me 
what the eighth Egyptian plague was. Wasn't it locust? Uh, the ninth Egyptian plague was three days of darkness. So this is an image of cicada. But bear with me, beloveds. Check this out. You know, the cicadas are very good friends of mine. I've spent a lot of time with these little angels. They are beautiful beings. I want you all to stay out of fear. I know the dark ones are going to try to hijack this very beautiful event of this eclipse and shifting. They want to keep people's energy down. Now the cicadas are of our wing nation. I've spent a lot of time. I've communicated with them. They're beautiful beings. I've taken many photos. Some of you have seen the photos that I've taken of these little sweet angels. They are pure. They're, they, they, their music is beautiful. See, we have Cicada 3301. This is the, uh, 34 degrees, 41 minutes north, 135 degrees, 30 minutes east. You see why this event is special. You see we have cicadas that the broods, the, the hatchings, um, every year there's a hatching, then there's a 13 year cycle, 17 year. What makes this special, and it's right around this eclipse, it's the spring that um, all three of these broods will be hatching at the same time. So there's going to be billions, if over a trillion potentially, we don't know. And we're gonna cover this a little more in depth here, uh, further into this video. <clears throat> this is just symbolic, so, this is actually a good sign. This is a beautiful thing. This is the cicadas. They they uh, molt out of their skin. You see them on the trees. I know as a child, we knew when we heard the chorus of the cicadas in the trees, they go up high in the trees and they make that beautiful sound. It's like the drum, the rattle of our Native Americans, our Native American people, you know. See the beautiful sound, you know, the rattle of the 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 drum, the beat, dum 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 dum. That's the heartbeat of the mother, the heartbeat of the goddess. You see, we have. Uh, this the the chorus we knew like in Cleveland growing up when we heard the cicadas the chorus we knew that the summer was coming to an end you know that you would hear them throughout the summer but the end like coming into fall summer into fall that shift of energy that it was very loud at night they would just go you know and it, would, it was a beautiful sound and we just knew that we were shifting the energies were shifting so I looked up, I searched this, these coordinates, the latitude, longitude, and this, this miraculously came up on Google Earth. It actually jumped to a different longitude, latitude, great spirit, sent me to this very beautiful spot in Kenya, Africa. Now, if you follow my channel, you know our beloved sister of the light, our divine sister, Judith Kusul, she talked about the matriarch of the elephant nation and synchronistically in the intro of this video i talked about the elephant being one of my totems are these beautiful angels of the earth the four-legged nation <sighs> this image came up you know what are the odds that these beautiful elephants you know in africa came up in this google earth image you see the elephants are of the earth they're of the drum beat they touch mother earth we love our elephant nation we love all our animal kingdoms our our nations <clears throat> but this this is a special spot in in kenya you see this uh these are the coordinates here if you want to copy paste that to see you can zoom in and out and get different angles of the, this this family of elephants you see the two babies here the two babies these little angels these are the twin the twins the twin flames these are the the divine union the heros gamos energy the eagle condor these beautiful angels of our crystal children coming in but uh this is very synchronistic and we're seeing that africa judith kusel talked about is splitting in half we see this, this splitting of the timelines, we're talking about this transitional split uh, between 3D and 5D. 
and all of our good people are going to the good new earth you know heaven on earth so this here's the coordinates of this beautiful image of these elephants our elephant nation in kenya africa so we're seeing the splitting of uh, africa and two we're seeing the new madrid we're going to talk about this too edgar casey had a vision of this Edgar Casey, who they called the Sleeping Prophet back in the 1930s, 40s. Uh, <clears throat> he saw that the earth through the New Madrid Fault, this is like the Mississippi Valley, that he was going to see North America, the United States, split in two in this time of great transition. Now, this is nothing to be afraid of. This is uh, the, the, the splitting of energies. To where he saw the Great Lakes would flow into the Gulf of Mexico. The spring bring the north and the south together. This is the eagle and the condor coming together. Although the waters already flow uh, through the Mississippi River. Our beloved Mississippi that divides the country in half. You see. But we're, we're healing the division. This division is going to heal the divide. The Great Divide between yin and yang between left and right right and wrong all these things so we see this was um, in kenya umoja uh but here is these coordinates from this a q image we have which is uh is osaka japan so osaka japan is these coordinates so we know japan is part of uh, this great shift, the dragon elders of Japan are working with our good people, the Earth Alliance. We have uh, dragon elders of all of Asia, of uh, Japan, of China, of Tibet, of India, of Vietnam, Southeast Asia, you know, Korea. All our dragon elders that have been working, these are uh, benevolent beings. Now, this is separate from the governments. These are... Uh, no, these are benevolent beings that of our dragon kingdom of the good dragons you know there were the false ones of the west who they've been duking it out with for hundreds of years now from divine sistar of the light jewel ye uh, the x equals the 24th letter of the english alphabet 24 is the symbol of jupiter the great north american eclipse total solar eclipse will take place at the moon's ascending node on april 8 2024 it is the second great american eclipse following the one in 8 21 17 to make an x over the usa with the paths of the eclipses x in the greek alphabet is the 22nd letter 24 our most special sacred 23 of the five five the letter chi you see uh chi in in the greek is x chi in chinese is energy you see everything is energy everything is vibration everything is frequency uh the hebrew chi which is the number 18 to in the hebrew meaning life x is also the roman numeral for 10 this is what i talked about in my last short video about this eclipse x roman numeral 10 so we have the 10 10 portals my nephew and niece three years apart came in on the 10 10 october 10 10 the, the, the little angel my nephew noah and charlize there they came in on the 10 10 three years apart exactly same day the 10th major arcana card of the tarot is the wheel of fortune representing the completion of one phase and the turning of the wheel to the next stage of the journey jupiter is also the ruler of this tarot card see the wheel of fortune this is our good people coming into good fortune you see the yi ching is the book of fortune fortune not only means wealth but it means the future see this is divination divinity this is alchemy so we we have the fortune good fortune you know this the, the luck of the irish coming in this the green yesterday many people on the 17th celebrated saint patrick's day regardless the good bad right or wrong of this specific date many people celebrated the green energy you know wearing green you know this is the year of the wood dragon wood element and Taoist in Chinese is green. It's the 
liver and gallbladder so liver anger we're healing the anger of the world through forgiveness kindness and compassion the wheel of the tarot speaks the law of love see this the law of love is the law of dharma dharma in sanskrit uh, in hindi is truth see the buddha shakyamuni buddha 2500 years ago one two three four coming in the buddha 2500 years ago turn the wheel of dharma to free humanity from karma you know from fate from this programs from cause and effect from samsara the wheel of suffering the wheel of illusion as the world progresses and law replaces lawlessness and peace replaces war and obedience chaos the time is coming where it is no longer needful to be in fear re releasing all fear there is nothing to fear not even fear itself the means of cleansing evil is to force it from the inner plane to the physical and there overcome it so much as being precipitated to the physical plane and there conquered this accounts for the strange and outbreaks of chaos everywhere especially in america each land must be cleansed but the greater battle is actually in progress here now the new moon in jerusalem will be on april eighth twenty twenty four that's the day of the new moon you see that's what causing the the eclipse april eighth also happens to be the first day of the first month of the hebrew calendar in other words a brand new biblical year begins on that date some say april 10th that's my sister victoria's birthday so we have the 410 also the x so we're seeing this from the 8th 9th 10th these three days most powerful days of aries the fire energies this is the birthing this is the the aries is the new year of the astrological the zodiacal calendar so here again the x over the united states see up through mexico and up into canada so we have here the wheel of fortune card clouds equal revelation higher thought ideas higher powers dreams aries is higher mind bull taurus lower mind see my queen is aries i am taurus see the earth and heaven taurus heaven uh, i mean aries heaven taurus the earth so we have higher mind lower mind upper egypt lower egypt north america south america the eagle north condor south divine feminine divine masculine yahweh yahweh yod he vad he god in the hebrew in the old testament sphinx dominion of the intellect guardian of the mysteries this sphinx has been activated it's one thing we've covered in the past angel aquarius matthew you know the angelic this is the higher dimensional beings x 10 is the new beginnings one plus zero equal one you see the one and the zero the yin the yang the yin the zero the yang the one you know this is khan and li khan water li fire completion of a cycle we're done with the cycle of the piscean lessons you know we're here to thrive and love and live you know as free beating, beings this is freedom of the age of aquarius the sword wisdom see wisdom truth authority leader the letters tarot uh torah torata latin for wheel orat latin for speak ator egyptian goddess for fertility and love orange equals success <clears throat> you see we have the orange here the orange is the sacral chakra the orange we're healing the sacral this is survival you know where we're shifting from survival of the fittest to thriving for all <laughs> you know anubis anubis is the egyptian god of death and reincarnation goodness ascending the goddess is ascending the goddess and the gods the goddesses and the gods the priest and the priestesses you know divine feminine divine masculine lion leo the lion uh, corleone the heart of the lion mark the wheel of tarot speaks the law of love we have uh, typhon typhon is the uh, greek titan god of storm monster aka set egyptian evil descending actually meant, meant the setting sun you know so the false ones see we say ignorance was descended upon man to keep them dumbed down you know to keep the suffering the struggling 
And that's what the dark ones are doing. They're trying to keep people ignorant, trying to dumb down everything. The three alchemy, alchemy primes. Primes, the original, the beginning, you know, the prime numbers, you know, mercury, mind and air, salt, body and earth, sulfur, soul and fire. You see the trinity, body, mind, spirit, the three dantians, past, present, future, water equals feelings, emotions, bull, Taurus, Luke, you know, Luke, the skywalker, you know, walking the skies, the heavens, our angelics. Our higher dimensional beings, our extraterrestrials, the sky nations are with us, our star families, the books, new chapters, book of life, Torah, the Torah, you know, Ra, the sun, the Tor, you know, equilibrium, Seth, Seth, and Anubis balance each other, you know, the day and the night, they balance the yin and the yang, illustrated by the sphinx, you see the sphinx here. We have uh, the phoenix, the angel, the bull, corners, four corners of the world. You know, this is the four directions. From Trader Girl Q, solar eclipse, April 8th, total solar eclipse visible across North America, blocks the sun and brings total darkness, 4-8-2024, equal 488. Gematria 488 equals Tom Hanks scandal, blood moon eclipse, Richard Branson. This is revealing. This is time of revelation. All these nefarious things are coming out to the light. You know, the revelation means that which is hidden will be revealed, such as apocalypse, the great unveiling, the great revelation. The moon's diameter will be 5.5% larger than average. May 5th, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Guardians of the Galaxy 3 were released by 5. For we are the guardians of the galaxy. We are the guardians of Earth. We are the guardians that return to this realm for full planetary liberation. We are protectors. We are here to protect the children, the innocents, our elders, and all those of the innocent ones. It will be the last total solar eclipse in the U.S. until August 23rd, 2044. We have 44 code. Where there was once darkness, there will now be light. The world is in need of a hero, and we are the heroes. We are the leaders that will rise up. So we have this totality here of the United States. Let's take a look at a bigger image. We have these images. They're kind of truncated on this, this map. Let's see. No. So we have this image of these heroes. This was also from Trader Girl. Uh, 6,432 days from the start date to the end date. 17 years, 7 months, 10, 10 days. 211 months, 10 days. I'm not sure the symbolism of this. Obviously, you know, we are the heroes. You know, the heroes return. The hero journey, being good, benevolent beings of compassion. So the show... I've never seen it, but uh, there must you see the symbolism of this eclipse in this logo of the show. Uh, 6,432 days, it's 555,724,800 seconds, 9262,80 minutes, 154,368 hours. So we have the symbolism of heroes, the hero's journey. This is an archetype of the good people, like Luke Skywalker was the symbolism of the hero's journey. This is from our divine brother of the light, Ariel, uh, from X, dark to light crossover. Did you all know the eclipse on April 8th would be passing over eight cities named Nineveh? Again, uh, Nineveh, the meaning of Nineveh is the fish. Um, Mosul, let's see here, the goddess Inanna of Nineveh. Inanna is, as you know, Venus, the water enclosure uh, with fish inside. So it's like a fish tank, but the, the fish, the Pisces, again, we have the fish symbolism of the place of the fish, offspring's habitation or strong propag propagation of the seat of gov government. 
Nineveh. So the etymology is it's un kind of unclear, you know, what the mean true meaning, but place fish place the place of the fish um, etymology from the verb nun to propagate strongly uh, nawa seat of the government the capital of assyria which was built by nimrod according to biblical account genesis here we go 1010 more 1010 xx symbolism uh, the Bible in the city of Nineveh, most predominantly in the books of Nahum and Jonah. Yona, the latter is much more than the story of a wayward prophet and a great fish. Coming from a subject of the realm, the author of Jonah committed high treason, initially against the Assyrian Empire, when showing God's counterintuitive compassion of Nineveh against the people that Assyria suppressed, including his own. The name Nineveh appears also in the Greek New Testament, but only in the context of the sign of Jonah and the resurrection when the men of Nineveh uh, will judge the generation of Christ. The town of Capernaum means town of Nahum, may very well have been named in commemoration of the destruction of Nineveh. So, the city of Nineveh was known as Nina, and Niwa or Ninu. So we see this symbolism of the fish, you know, the Piscean energy, the uh, the age of Pisces that has ended. We are in the age of Aquarius, but it hasn't come to full fruition. So passing over eight cities named Nineveh, Nineveh, New York, Nineveh, Missouri, Nineveh, Ohio, Texas, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Nova Scotia, and Indiana. Is, isn't Nineveh a place God told Jonah to go repent? Of course, anybody into astrology would know eight means a new beginning, which will also inadvertently mean the end of something. So why would we be advised to do the following on that day? On God's calendar, this eclipse would be occurring at the end of the year, April 10th being the first day of the first month of the new year. See, some say April 8th, some say 9th, some say 10th, but it's right around this eclipse. Genesis 1 establishes that the sun and moon were appointed for signs, seasons, days, and years. With this understanding, only the sacred calendar harmonizes the solar and lunar cycles. The truth about God's calendar explains why the 19-year time cycles are an astronomical fact. You see, God speaks to us through the stars, through astrology and astronomy. The sacred calendar, generally referred to as the Hebrew calendar or God's calendar, has been accepted without question by true Christians since the inception of the Church of God. This unconditional acceptance sprang from the confidence placed in the Apostles, who had been trained by Christ. People, something significant is about to take place. The what in all of this will remain to be seen. Of course, we don't know how this is all going to unfold, but all these signs and symbols are pointing to this most sacred day of the eclipse. But I hope you are preparing yourselves for the upcoming shift. 2024 will, be like, will not be like any other year we have experienced in our lifetime. We're preparing in body, mind, and spirit. We're preparing with faith, with hope, with holding our visions, holding our dreams of the new earth. The apocalypse around Passover, now this again is not something to be feared. Apocalypse is just the unveiling, the revealing, the shifting. Uh, here again, Little Egypt, Illinois, a ring of fire eclipse, 10, 14, 23. That was this one that forms the A, a total solar eclipse, the A. So the three together again form the A, which we're going to cover here in a little bit. August 21st, August 21st, 2017, plus six years, six months, six weeks, six days equals April 8th, 9th, 2024. So again, we have the 6666 in our Divine Sis Star of the Light intuited this number in her transmission, her um, uh, our Divine Greek Sis Star of the Light, Erini, in one of our past transmissions. This is the number she transmitted. And this is before this was even released. 
uh, Ray Lee, uh, first American solar eclipse on 8-21-2017, was key 90, a white crystal dog, Christ all. Second American eclipse for 8 2024 will be Keen 170, white magnetic dog. Both total solar eclipses horizontally line up with the center of the Zolt Keen. Keen 130, white cosmic dog. Dog means love, loyalty, heart. These two total solar eclipses create the Tav, letter 22 of Hebrew, and Paleo Hebrew, drawn as an X and as a cross. Again, the, cr the X is a cross turned sideways, um, means covenant. They are both located on each side of the two-day two day, uh, portal, all columns, the Alpha and the Omega, the Aleph and Tav. The Alpha Omega Greek, Aleph and Tav, same in Hebrew. So exciting, so divine, the Zolkin is the cosmic order of harmony, balance, love, and unity. It's time to shift from the VAT's control calendar to the true cosmic connected flow that the Druids, the Aztecs, the Chinese, the Mayan, and many others align with and approved of in 1987. So here's the galactic calendar. You see 130 directly. This is galactic center, Hunabku, the galactic butterfly. You see the butterfly symbolism over here the wings of the butterfly this is the central column which we talk about in our daily transmissions you see right here in the middle so see the x again over the whole mayan calendar the 10 the 10 came into this realm 510 portal this is the day of the mother the great mother the divine feminine from sandra walter special reminder for hearts and service the great american eclipse is back and approaching quickly if you participated in the 2017 eclipse, you know how important it is to prepare grid gate points in your own consciousness. Be sure to make travel plans before the big rush to the line of totality. The total solar eclipse over the USA is on Monday, April 8th at 11.17 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2.17 Eastern. In the path of totality, viewing time will be 4 minutes 27 seconds. The eclipse crosses paths with the last solar eclipse over the USA in 2017. The intersection point is slightly southwest of Carbondale, Illinois. The next total solar eclipse over the USA will be in 21 years in 2045. Connect with your inner guidance. How are you called to serve during this eclipse? Do you need to be in the path of totality? What location is best for you? So again, here's another map of the totality over the U.S. So we're at the, the crossroads, the crossing over. This is the shifting over into the new time, the new earth. Edgar Cayce spoke of the new Madrid activating the splitting of the U.S. in half where the Great Lakes would flow. This is the Mississippi River Valley, you know, the XOXO, the O. Omega, you know, the end into the beginning, the, the X is the one, the zero. It used to mean hugs and kisses. I don't know if it still does. One and zero, the cross, uh, plus the X, the four directions, the void, emptiness, and form. One is form, zero, emptiness, the void into form, emptiness into form. This is the mirror. Uh, generation X we have, which I am part of, the, the gene out of time. This is removing people from the prison of time. This is the Xing out of the, the prison systems, you know, releasing humanity from these slavery systems such as the debt slavery systems. Rebels with a cause, breaking time loops of the archons. This is something I wrote. Isn't it interesting that the triple X, XXS, X is a symbol for pornography, you know, which in Roman numerals 10, 10, 10, the trinity of the yin and the yang, this is the trinity, the trident, you know, they had to warp it to manipulate, to, to dumb it down, divine masculine and divine feminine, yin and yang, and divine union, you know, see, we're breaking free of these pornographic control programs, we can say unity, divine union, holy marriage, also called heros gamos. This was being perverted or corrupted due to ignorance and suppression. 
of the true tantric and divine sexual love true ecstasy we say orgone energy wilhelm reich that coined the term that discovered orgone which many of you know about he believed was the universe having an orgasm this is the energy released from this massive galactic ecstasy you know this is a time you know ecstasy is the bliss you know in, in the true form um, when a abraham entered the land of canaan as people say canaan but canaan is closer to the proper pronunciation 2000 bc the city of jerusalem was called salem or shalom peace the land of peace salem illinois 88 degrees west there's the 88 code and you see over seven years this is a seven year span we have the seven code you see the y the the yahweh you know of, of, on the cross uh, god in the cross this is the four direction the four elements into the five elements you see this is i believe an image from back to the future i I believe they said 88 you had to go 88 miles an hour to break through you know the time space barrier you know the the wormhole to create the wormhole and you see in here the y the yahweh the um symbolism jefferson nickel uh, so the this great american clips will have the same exact configuration of what happened before the 1811 to 1812 new madrid earthquakes um, also when the, this comet so they're calling this the devil comet which we're going to get into here this is the 12p ponds brooks you see again they want to turn something benevolent into something dark or evil or whatnot but this is actually a beautiful symbolism of the blue, blue kachina you can see here this alignment mars saturn venus mercury jupiter uranus and uh here we have the ponds brooks a comet that may be visible um, by the naked eye on the eclipse uh, from megan murphy uh, passing this along from charlie jones to say that there's much buzz online concerning the upcoming april 8th solar eclipse would be a vast understatement why is this particular eclipse causing such a fuss uh, this is from michael schneider i'm going to share something truly amazing once again a lot of naysayers out there will dismiss it as a coincidence that really doesn't mean anything but how is it possible that such a vast number of coincidences you know we have it in quotes so we don't believe in coincidences you know coincidence just means two events coinciding together that are symbolic you know we have this we call it synchronicity so it's not some random event you know just happens to take place april 2024 last friday i told my core supporters about an amazing discovery reg regarding the sun the moon and seven other planets in our solar system will be aligned during the great american eclipse eight so there are seven planets um, i'm going to focus on seven locations named nineveh which happened to fall in the path of the great eclipse uh, let's go back seven years august 21st 2017 the first great american eclipse also known as the seven salem eclipse over seven cities salem oregon salem idaho salem wyoming nebraska missouri kentucky and south carolina salem short for jerusalem that is why so many americans chose the name for their communities now the second great eclipse again nineveh the eclipse will cross over Nineveh in the province of Providence of Nova Scotia in Canada. So why you sometimes see a list of eight Ninevehs? Um, some location residents will be able to view a total solar eclipse, and other partial solar eclipse will be viewed. And Genesis chapter 10 tells us that Nineveh was built by Nimrod. Uh, in addition, Wikipedia says the path of the Bursagal eclipse crossed over Nineveh on June 15th, 763 BC. The Assyrian eclipse, also known as the Bur Sagal, or Sagal <laughs> eclipse, is a solar eclipse recorded in Assyrian eponym, list that most likely dates in the 10th year of the reign of King Ashur Dan III. The eclipse is identified with one that occurred in 15th of June, 763 BC in the proleptic julian calendar some believe that the bursagel 
eclipse happened at the same time that Jonah was in Nineveh, warning the population the city would be destroyed. The eclipse occurred over the Assyrian capital city of Nineveh in the middle of the reign of Jeroboam, who ruled Israel from 786 to 746 B.C. According to 2 Kings 14.25, the prophet Jonah lived and prophesied in Jeroboam's reign. The biblical scholar Donald Wiseman has speculated that the eclipse took place around when Jonah arrived in Nineveh and urged the people to repent, otherwise the city would be destroyed. This would explain the dramatic repentance of the people of Nineveh as described in the book of Jonah. Ancient cultures, including Assyria, viewed eclipses as omens of imminent destruction, and the empire was in chaos at this time, struggling with revolts, famines, and two separate outbreaks of plague. This is why the dark wants us to be in fear and chaos, you know, so they keep their control. But we're not going to let that happen. I can understand how the appearance of such an eclipse could have been seen as strong confirmation of Jonah's message of Nineveh. Now a historic solar eclipse of our own is here, but instead of crossing over just one Nineveh, crossing over seven, and then the eighth in Canada, seven Ninevehs in the U.S., it is being reported that the Great American Eclipse of 2024 will be the most viewed astronomical event in all of U.S. history. Out of more than 19,000 cities, towns, and villages in the U.S., the very first community in the U.S. that the path of the eclipse will touch will be Eagle Pass, Texas. You see the eagle, the eagle and the condor, the very first city in the, North, in the United States. Of course, Eagle Pass, Texas has become ground zero of the national immigration crisis. Residents in a border city of Texas has revealed how police and National Guard troops have taken over, seizing their properties as migrants trash lines the streets. The trash lining in the streets of garbage. You know, Eagle Pass, which is home to the 28,500 Texans, has become ground zero in the country-wide political fight as swaths of lawmakers, celebrities, and journalists flock to give their two cents of the ever-swelling migrant border crisis. Illegal migrants crossing have overwhelmed nearly every sector in Eagle Pass, but state and federal responses have two wary residents say. The Del Rio sector, including Eagle Pass, reported 16,718 migrant arrests in January alone. The issue has become exacerbated under Joe Biden, and the southern border has witnessed a record of at least 6.3 million migrants crossing since he took office. Just another coincidence, eh? There is one more thing about the month of April that I wanted to mention. In late April, billions of 13-year cicadas and billions of 17-year cicadas will start emerging from the ground simultaneously for the first time since Thomas Jefferson was president. This spring, two different broods of cicadas. There's actually three. One that lives on a 13-year cycle and the other that lives on a 17-year cycle will emerge at the same time from underground in a rear synchronized event that last occurred in 1803. <laughs> Again, eight and the 13 billions of winged insects will make an appearance across the Midwest and the Southeast, beginning in some places in late April for a raucous mating ritual that tends to inspire fascination and annoyance in equal measure. It can be very loud. I was there in Ohio the last 17. I took many photographs. It was pretty overwhelming. I loved it. You know, I love our cicadas and insects. As most of you know, if you see my photographs, I've been a photographer for over 33 years and taken tens of thousands of pictures macro back in the day in the 90s. I was one of the few doing insect macro photography. Now there's thousands and thousands of people doing amazing photography of our insect nations. They're beautiful, these little critters. There's, you know, our dragonflies, our beetles, you know, some of the most colorful creatures on the planet when you get close up and see them. So we have um, this year dual emergence, once in a lifetime event. While any given 13-year brood and 17-year brood can occasionally emerge at the same time, each specific pair will see their cycles aligned only once every 221 years. What's more, the year cicada groups known as brood 
that's 13 and brood 14 happen to make their homes adjacent to one another with a narrow overlap in central illinois a narrow overlap in central illinois we ask of course this that's odd because the path of the great american eclipse of 17 and the path of 2024 just happened to intersect in illinois you know a giant x over america is being formed by the paths of the two eclipses and that giant x will finally be completed on april 8th there's so much more about these two eclipses in my most recent book entitled chaos uh, so i'm not anticipating that any particular event will happen on april 8th rather i believe that we will witness on april 8th a sign and a warning for the entire nation just like the city Nineveh in the ancient world, we are being given an opportunity to change direction. Will we take advantage of that opportunity or will we ignore it? And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man, Luke, again, Luke 17, again, 26. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah, Matthew, again, 12:39. Yet forty days and Nineveh will be overthrown, Jonah. The total eclipse that will take place on April 8th will pass through Jonah, Texas. Again, Jonah uh, also passed through Nineveh, Rapture, Indiana, all these places under the constellation Cetus, uh, which is the whale that could be part of that uh, constellation in the image earlier. Let's see here. Let's see what that constellation looks like real quick. Let's look up an image here. Let's see here. Yeah, that could be the in the um that image we showed earlier. The whale. See the whale nation coming in again well the our angels of the sea also including the path is the ark williamston kentucky 40 days after the eclipse will be may 18th the eve of the pentecost so from the net christ the upcoming eclipse six years six months six weeks and six days after the total eclipse 2017 spells in the hebrew aleph greek alpha and the omega is tav hebrew all the major planets in alignment with the 2024 total eclipse with the Pleiades and a comet. The X intersects over the great New Madrid fault zone. Chinese spy balloon followed the path of the 2017 eclipse. The last total eclipse followed the path of the crack across America from Montana to Florida. We're going to cover this real quick, this crack across America. Um, so here we have... The symbolism and again the links for this the link for this uh, article here that I've compiled it took me many many hours to put this together from many sources it will be in the description below the links from Julie Ryder okay we're here again the a over the United States oh probably nothing Kate Middleton here we have this upside down a see they invert everything but it's also symbol the ox or Taurus you see, I was born in the year of the ox and Taurian. This is Venusian energy, the ox Taurus. So this is very symbolic because the, the Taurus connected with Venus, connected with the Divine Mother, you know, of the 10 portal, the 510 portal. So you see, I'm sure many of you are seeing this, this conspiracy that's going viral about Kate Middleton people there's rumors that king charles is dead you know that's came out today that's going viral kate middleton missing you're seeing many videos and uh, posts about this it's very symbolic you know and then this is you know ox and the ox the ox is also symbolized of enlightenment you know the the ascension ascending from the dark into the light you see going from ignorance to truth you know revealing the truth so again the Aleph here they're the fair mongering uh, let us know in the comments have you ever seen public schools closing during a solar eclipse no so we're seeing Hilliard school we're seeing all these school closings along the totality uh, you know there's a lot of 
they're telling you prepare for some kind of cataclysm we don't believe that we believe truly that we've avoided all you know we've shifted out of all any cataclysmic timelines but the dark is still trying to keep people in fear you're seeing i've never known in 51 years on this planet of a school closing <laughs> you know during an eclipse total eclipse have you let us know in the comments if you've experienced that but look at all these multiple there are many there's just a few of them Lakota school, you know, after, you know, our Lakota tribe. So here we go, the Texas Tav, you know, original map by sand depicting the T Texas Tav, April 14, 2023, and the April 8th, also Corpus Christi, and down here, the Eagle Pass, you know, the passing, this is the passing from, you know, the wand from one hand to another, you know, this is the shift, the crossing over, the apex of the Texas Tav is in the hill country of Texas, west of San Antonio. The closest town is Utopia, Texas. Here we go, the Utopia. We're, we're transitioning into a utopian society, you know, through the new earth energies. So here it's difficult to find any nation in history so perfectly trisected by solar eclipses geographically as the U.S. 2017-2023. Then we have the Mideast eclipses 2027 and 2034. Uh, the X, you know, over Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, you know, over the Middle East and Africa and the coming eclipses 2027, 2024. Again, the Paleo-Hebrew Tav, the T, <clears throat> and the Aleph. These are the two um, letters of their alphabet. Paleo Hebrew was the script of the Old Testament was written in, not the modern script that is currently used, which standardized in 200 BC. Left the Tav, the last letter, 22nd of the Hebrew, essentially a cross or X in the above illustration. On the right is the Paleo Hebrew Aleph, the first letter of the alphabet. The Tav is being written by the shadow of the moon on both locations. The Aleph, where we get Alpha and our letter A. So Alpha and Omega, reading right to left, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, Revelation 22, 13. Go back and look at Aleph over the map. So I am the Aleph and the Tav, you know, the beginning and the end, the I am presence. You see, this is the Christ consciousness. This is the love of truth, of life. <clears throat> so here again, the Tav over the 22nd, the Hebrew over the U.S., Chi or X, first, um, first letter in Greek for Christ can stand for the word Christ, the X. You know, X marks the spot. Happy Xmas, people say. Christ, the X, is symbolic of X. Um, Christians use the letter X as a secret symbol to indicate their membership in the church to others. You know, you see that within the eye, you know, within the Vesica Pisces, the fish symbolism, the X in the middle. <clears throat> you know, this is Christ in the eye, you know, the eye of God, it's the center, you know, the still point. So we have American Omega total eclipses, the cross over the U.S., here we have from Tolem, Tolemanu, omens piling up for 2024, mass emergence of insects in the aftermath of eclipse season and the comet. Uh, so they're saying this potentially will be coming after the eclipse um, in 2024, 13 year brood, largest of the cicada and cicada broods, coinciding with the 17 year brood, 13 for the first time since 1803. So this is, so the emergence can vary slightly by geographical location, but typically occurring in late spring to early summer when the ground temperature reaches about 64. So this could be uh, several weeks after the eclipse. The etymology of ma Magi Cicada or Magi Cicada uh, have been broken into two components, Magi for magic, same root as magic, the magi, the kings, you know, the three magi that went to the Christ, the, the three bearing the three gifts, the three wise men, you know, this prefix suggests something extraordinary, mystical, or enchanting. Cicada is the Latin reference to a species and points to the loud, noticeable 
uh, that, that the males make to attract females. You know, this is the calling of the masculine to the feminine. You know, the emergence of cicadas has been associated with foretelling major events or shifts. The appearance might have been interpreted as predicting natural events, changing in leadership or upheavals. Some Native American tribes regard cicadas as symbols of transformation, renewal, and rebirth. There we have the rebirth again, the, the rebirthing of consciousness. This is the great shift of the ages, being born again into the new earth. They are sometimes viewed as harbingers of change, signaling a time to leave behind old ways and embrace new beginnings due to the way cicadas spend the majority of their lives underground. This is inner earth energy before emerging en masse shedding their exoskeletons and taking to the skies it's like they leave the past behind when they shed their skins you know they shed their exoskeletons it's like an exact replica i'm sure most of you have seen these we'd see them all over the trees in the summer the fact that they emerge en masse could indicate something larger or an all-encompassing event or change in combination with the eclipse, it gives rise to apocalyptic undertones. Transformation is the key word, so apocalypse is really the transformation. It's the transfiguration. It's not a negative thing at all. You know, the negative is going away. You know, anything that we're focusing, obviously, we experience negative things, thoughts, feelings, actions, but we must stay in the positive tone, in the positive frequencies, positive mindset positive thoughts, thinking, feeling, not pushing away the negative, experiencing it, witnessing, allowing it to move through you and letting it go. And so the conclusion must be that the U.S. is about to undergo a significant transformative change on a national level. It's worth noting how the key words used in the description of these magi cicada, mass emergence, striking, noisy behavior, loud, extreme, brief, if the emergence of these seven species can be seen as an omen, then these descriptive words point to an event or a change, which is sudden or short. Could that be the solar flash? Could this be the event? Strikingly extreme and loud. This is, there's no hiding from this. This is an internal. This is, the event is internal to magnify and to, to mirror externally. The number seven is also worth paying attention to. It revolves around themes of wholeness, perfection, and enlightenment, awakening. Think of the tarot card number 20, the judgment card. That's the XX. There we go, the double X. You know, the numerologist Cairo or Chero associated the number seven primarily with Neptune, but also the moon and water, symbol of dissolving changes restlessness and otherworldly you can also think of the seventh tarot card the chariot we've been talking about the chariot uh, from uh devyani singh from isis channelings talks a lot about the uh, chariot lately which is associated with the sign of cancer we're moving into um, this cancerian energy see with with as the the solstice the summer solstice is another powerful where the sun aligns with the cancer you know the tropic of cancer which in turn is the sun sign of the u.s occupied by their natal 8h a place related to financial matters and crises we're seeing a big shift in the financial sectors and you know the crumbling of the old the dissolving of these old uh, debt slavery systems these corrupt financial systems which is going to shift to the benevolent systems the quantum systems the quantum financial qfs you know bricks is part of this and our dragon elders of the east the blood bank as adam calls it we can also consider the events which took place in 1803 perhaps the most significant event of 1803 was the louisiana purchase on April 30th, 1803, the United States purchased Louisiana territory from France for $15 million. What a steal. <laughs> Back then, that would be like a billion dollars today. This acquisition doubled the size of the United States at the time, opening vast tracts of land to exploration, settlement, and commerce. 
The Marbury versus Madison case in 1803 established the principle that the American courts have the power to strike down laws, statutes, and some government actions that contravene the U.S. Constitution. In 1803, the British East India Company started the Second Maratha War against the Maratha Empire in India. Uh, <clears throat> Aiming to expand British territory in India, the war lasted until 1805, resulting in British victory and significant expansion of British control in the Indian subcontinent. You know, the British Empire occupied India for many, many years uh, before Gandhi rose to, to free his people. He helped part of the process of freeing people from British rule, you know, the Indian people, uh, <clears throat> the country. 1803 gave us noticeable themes related to France, the Constitution, and territory of the U.S., as well as British expansionism. Two Scandinavian countries join NATO at present day, and the interest of adopting Ukraine into the alliance, too, is relevant here. But we can also th see things go in the opposite direction. Maybe the Constitution of the U.S. comes into question, or the territory of the Anglo-American world power starts to diminish. So here we go, as the BRICS alignment, B-R-I-C-S, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Uh, this is the, those were the first countries that came, formed an alliance to free humanity from these slavery systems. And I think now over 100, 120 countries have joined BRICS. So you're going to hear a lot about BRICS in the media. Mainstream media is probably not going to touch it, but we'll see as this shift and we know that the White Hats, the Alliance, are going to take over all the mainstream channels very soon. We might see the Western, Western Empire begin to fade. The Napoleonic Wars, 1803 to 1815, were a series of conflicts bought uh, fought between the first French Empire under Napoleon and a fluctuating array of European coalitions. Now the French peacock, Emmanuel Macron, <laughs> Macron is puffing his chest against Russia while France will have the solar eclipse on April 8th as their ascendant, putting the limelight on the theme on them in 2024. Finally, 2024 is a solar maximum year. Studies have shown that these solar cycle peaks result in human physiology and psychological responses, responses such as increased anxiety and mood changes. These are part of uh, the ascension energies, you know, these ascension symptoms, these ascension activations, whatever you want to call it. All in all, it seems to be very a very interesting cocktail. The universe has prepared for the collective has prepared that the collective in 2024 so we here have a picture of the cicada here look at that it looks like in front of an eclipse very cool shot there so i'm going to try to speed things up here i'm going to keep this under two hours we have a lot more information here i'm going to skip through some of these things if you want to do further research you can go to the link in the description below uh pamela johnson nineveh 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 sign of jonah 40 days of Pentecost, a comet, and now this. Here we go. Here's the crack, 1,700-mile crack across America, they call it. See, this kind of follows the first eclipse almost exactly. The second large crack here, this is in the New Madrid. So this 1,700-mile crack across America and the New Madrid are almost exact where, these, where the two eclipses are forming this X over America. Look at right right in the middle. New Madrid seismic zone, 1811 Great Quake, 1812, 1812, the second large crack. So these are like fissures. This is uh, fault lines, a major fault line. Look at this one goes through Yellowstone, a national park here, and down through the country. In 1981, a 1700 mile crack across America was discovered. This wasn't that long ago. 1981, they discovered this using modern day gravity mapping satellite data. It is referred to as the Montana to Florida lineament. Lineament or the Missouri gravity low. This crack seen in blue intersects the New Madrid fault line, which is represented in black. So the black New Madrid, and this is the. Uh, the Florida, I guess it's, or uh, 
what is it, Missouri gravity law? <laughs> well, I haven't heard that term before. What's interesting is that these fault lines in the path of the great American eclipse takes place. The, the 2017-2024 are identical. See, both cracks intervene at the New Madrid seismic zone. So this is not representing the New Madrid line kind of flows like this. So this is how you have the St. Lawrence Rift, Mid-Continent Rift up here. Yeah, so this is, as you can see, the two on top of each other, almost exact pretty wild stuff okay by tony johnson california network this is from the catholic.org so the catholics the christians are following this and seeing this eclipse is one of the signs uh prophecy from their bibles you know scientists found a 1700 crack 1700 mile crack across the u.s uh, crack means quakes can happen across most of the country is America at risk for great earthquakes spanning across the full United States? See cracks across America and rift zones. Many conceal large fractal, fracture type faults where scientists may not be able to identify where these hidden fractures may unleash, unleash catastrophic earthquakes. Los Angeles, California, November 1981. A study was published that rocked the scientific world and spark concern in FEMA circles in which a 1700 mile crack across America was discovered. Worse yet, this crack cuts through the New Madrid seismic zone where in 1811 and 12, three giant earthquakes devastatingly struck the center of America. Scientists have been struggling since then to answer the question of what risks this mega feature may pose to our heartland today. Recently and less known is a study from an independent geologic research set of work that has identified a possible second crack through America that crosses into and through the same volatile New Madrid seismic zone. The original 1700 mile crack across America was found using modern day gravity mapping using cons uh, computers to process the measurements. The ancient rift estimated to be about a billion years old was dubbed the Missouri Gravity Low in the easternmost section of the crack across America. <clears throat> so we have this major activation along these two major seismic zones and faults. So we'll see, you know, in the center is again here in uh, by Carbondale and Makanda is the name. Where the 217 and 2024 eclipse cross. Another effect of all this is that the eclipse crossroads area about 9,000 square miles. So this, and here this rectangle is about 9,000 square miles. Uh, parts of southern Missouri, southern Illinois, and western Kentucky that will soon uh, experience the second uh, totality. The Great Comet and the New Madrid Earthquakes. So this is another prophetic Im imagery coming through with this comet. We believe could be part of the blue kachina of the Hopi. We'll finish this off with that, but we have a few more things to cover. I'm going to try to wrap this up within the next half hour, so hang in there with us a little longer. The year 1811 started off with an amazing light, one not many humans are lucky enough to ever see in their lifetime. The Great Comet of 1811 was first spotted in March of 1811, and its intensity increased through December 1811. Some records show it had a 25, uh, the tail 25 degrees long and a head 50% larger than the sun. Its intensity was the brightest on October 1811. So we, let me, let me silence this thing here. It faded it fade away by April 1812. This count was the most visible celestial sight that occurred in 2,000 years. Like other great comets, it was a cause of great concern. Adding to their fears was the fact that in September of the same year, there was a total eclipse of the sun that moved across the tri-state lands, including the New Madrid region. The appearance of this great comet, which was visible around the globe for 17 months, was at its brightest during the earthquakes. The comet has an orbit of 3,065 years, was last seen during the times of Ramses II in Egypt. In December 1811, the comet appeared to 
Some observers to fade and to others appear to perform frightening acrobatics and split in two. Curiously, it also had a, circum, a circumpolar orbit as viewed by many staying within view for 24 hours a day at certain latitudes. So we have this X marks the spot 40 days of Teshuva and the eclipse on August 21st, 2017. So that was the original Nineveh and the sign of Jonah. Um, appears that God had possibly used a solar eclipse at least once to bolster the messages of his prophet. Around the time of the prophet Jonah, there was a solar eclipse over the area which would have included the city of Nineveh. <clears throat> so they believe there was a solar eclipse at this time. Repentance equals wrath withheld. So is the August 21st, 2017 eclipse significant? So other converging signs include Israel, the fig tree leafed out in 1948, the generation that won't pass away before all these things are fulfilled from the fig tree budding to the second coming of Christ would end somewhere between 2017 and 2028. The Revelation 12 signs is set to occur September 23rd, 2017. So very significant, the 23 again in 2017. The Giza Pyramid sign, September 20th, 2017. The total solar eclipse, which uh, began in Oregon and ended in South Carolina. This is the 2017 that followed the 1700 mile crack. A season of repentance. I do see significance with the August 21st, 24, 2024 date. It occurs exactly 40 days from Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. 40 is frequently used as a number in the Bible as a time of testing, such as 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, wilderness Yeshua's 40 days fasting in the desert, and Moses' 40 day meeting with God on Mount Sinai. So the 40-day season coincides with the season of Teshuva, which in Jewish religion is a time of repentance before the Day of Judgment. This is the atonement. The Catholics uh, practice 40 days of Lent. Uh, as a human tradition, it does not carry the weight of one of the feasts of God. However, when we dive into the study of the month of Elul and the season of Teshuva, we start to uncover some interesting facts. So you can read up on this in the article below. Uh, we want to talk about this. You see the spiral core of Comet 12P. This is the comet that uh, is in the in the alignment with this eclipse 12P, also called Pons Brooks. That's what they're calling the Devil Comet. Uh, around the world, astronomers are monitoring Comet 12P, Pons Brooks. As it approaches the sun for a close encounter in April, most cameras are focused on the comet's magnificent tail, which is growing longer every night. Norwegian astronomer Jan Erik Wallstad decided instead to take a closer look at the comet's core, and there he found a spiral. So we're seeing the spiraling. Uh, this image uh, processed with moderate stretching to reveal the structure so you can see here's the structure of the core of this comet it's a beautiful spiral with this long tail you know this blue kachina this dragon energy uh, this is uh the core itself was not blown out it, but from the original data creating the yin yang shape at the core so you see this spiraling yin yang fa feminine masculine wide spiral uh, the outbursts are signs of cryovolcanism, volcanic activity, uh, the icy plumes of dust and gas into space. It's like a major geyser. Such exhaust plumes would naturally blend themselves into spirals as the comet rotates. So the comet's rotating and it's throwing off these uh, plumes of dust and gas creating this beautiful spiral. I ever sized devil comet. See this it's a massive about the size of Mount Everest a once in a lifetime event The unused building block of the solar system is hurtling towards the Sun leaving behind a trail of dust and gas 
As we speak, 12P Pons Brooks is making its way around the inner region of the solar system for the first time in more than 70 years and might soon become visible to the naked eye. So we're seeing it's about the size of Mount Everest, a Halley-type comet. Pons Brooks completes its journey around the sun every 71.3 years and was last spotted in our skies 1954. So we got the 71, 17, 73 into the 37 uh, heaven on earth codes. It started the month in the western evening sky just below the Andromeda galaxy and is steadily moving through the tip of the constellation of Pisces. So this blue Kachina, this um, comet is moving through Pisces. Towards the end of the month, the comet will move along the line of the brighter stars of Aries. So it's moving into, from Pisces into Aries in the direction of Jupiter. So this is very significant astrologically. Uh, the comet is expected to reach its perihelion on the 21st of April, but it will... Why is it called a devil comet? It's not the first time has been the comet has been visible in recent months. The so-called devil comet was spotted in July of 2023. So the, the comet is known as a cryovolcanic comet, meaning that every so often it randomly erupts like a volcano, spewing out dust, gas, and ice into the surrounding space. When it did this last year, it instantaneously became a hundred times brighter with the outburst forming a devil horn shape, hence the name. So because of the shape, this horn shape, they're uh, misnaming it a uh, devil comet, but it's more of an angelic comet. And it's one of the signs from the great spirit of this great shift and this great event that we're experiencing in this now. So we're, it potentially will be visible during the eclipse, they're saying here, from Michelle Sanders. The 144,000 come to make the earth green again. I refuse to call this comet a devil as it heralds the rebirth and the second coming of Christ and Christ consciousness. This is the awakening of human consciousness, of, of God consciousness. I was told the final note emitted by the 144,000 Fa, which involves the color and frequency of green three and a half years ago. The comet will be visible during the final solar eclipse of the seven-year cosmic calibrations. Now, we believe it will be visible. No one knows for sure. There's a high probability of this. Seven planets line up on April 18th uh, during this eclipse from Natalia Alba. Uh, beloved ones, to culminate this month's powerful and healing energies, we have a stabilizing and loving eclipse in Libra, and that's the one on the 25th coming up, the lunar eclipse, together with a comet, 12P Pons Brooks, discovered in 1812 that is now passing by Earth, does so every 71 years. It will be observed next to the sun at the time of the eclipse. For all the cosmos witnesses what is taking place on planet Earth, the retrieval of our sovereignty as divine beings, for it is time. Comets act as messengers of change. And even though this comet was named the evil, actually the devil comet, by some astrologers, it, this only denotes fear. For in ancient times, these were not good omens, as all were interpreted from a limited and fearful state of being. We're looking at this whole event from a higher state of being, a higher state of consciousness, seeing all these things coming into alignment for our great shift of the ages into the new golden age of Mother Earth, of the new Eden, the new Jerusalem, peace, prosperity, and bliss for all our good people of the new earth. Brooks Comet represents the transformation and hence the rebirth that humanity as a species is now experiencing. We are immersed in a window of great change during this month, which is the catalyst of what is yet to come energetically and on an individual level. Change is a natural process that occurs in species when we are ready to embody higher levels of consciousness. Chaos is only seen as such by our human minds, which do not understand the divine organization behind every single event that occurs. This is the process that we are now undergoing, and these cosmic events confirm the harmonic timeline that has been already created. 
we are now in a battle over consciousness for we have finally stood firm in who we are disengaging from form manipulation and control healing and reconnecting our wings to fly high again so of course the dark ones the false ones and the fairest they're trying to continue to hijack our consciousness keep us in the lower frequency keep us in fear keep us in uh, duality keep us in separation mode you know they separate us by religion by fake races all these fake things fake this fake that you know be afraid of viruses be afraid of demons be afraid of each other you know all these nonsensical stupidity i call ignorance trying to keep people in that ignorant state instead of an enlightened awakened uh, intelligent state of being last year the comet was traveling through the andromeda galaxy to move later on to the pisces constellation and ending up traveling into aries i'll follow a perfect plan within creation for this is precisely what we have been experiencing chakra transfiguration with the assistance of our aurora andromedan family the end of a cycle marked by pisces and saturn also healing polarities and creating more unity with pisces to initiate ourselves again with this, within this eternal evolutionary wheel of creation with aries but this time more empowered wiser and released from consciousness traps and oppressors a comet that announces peace harmony and love for even though we are being bombarded with what is wrong in the world the truth as many of you planetary workers know is that our planet is being rehabilitated as well as our authentic divine lineage and mission for we for the first time in our human history are becoming a unified planet even though there is yet a lot of work to be done in our dual universe and planet duality is what souls chose to experience here and it shall continue to balance creation however there is also the free will to choose which force one desires to align creating multiple possibilities timelines and harmonic results every kind thought feeling and act contributes towards our planetary transition every day we have the chance to awaken to the truth of who we are and step out of this 3d simulation that many are still immersed in for in the moment we remember and awake the illusion vanishes, revealing the purity of our divinity and unique mission. May you always remain in the love, wisdom, and power of your illumined self, beloveds, within infinite love from NataliaAlba.com. Now we're going to finish this up with the story of the blue kachina from our Hopi nation, our Hopi people. The blue star kachina is part of the Hopi prophecy and we believe these comets are part of this prophecy. Uh, the blue kachina is said to be the ninth and final sign before the day of purification described as an apocalypse. And this is not a negative thing. This is a purification, a transformation, a cleansing to help shift us into the new earth, the new heaven upon the new earth. The blue star kachina prophecy is a Hopi revelation about the coming end of civilization on earth. The prophecy describes a heavenly being called the Blue Star, whose arrival on earth will signal the beginning of the end times. Now, this isn't the end of life. This is the end of being a prisoner of time. This is the ending of the false projections, the false manipulations of the 3D matrix of Maya, the illusions. The Blue Star Katsina was a twin brother, the Red Star Katsina. Which, whose arrival will come later, bringing about the destruction of most life on earth. According to the prophecy, and this is symbolic, this is the destruction of the old, the false systems. Don't think of this as the good being destroyed. The good carries on. The meek shall inherit the earth. According to the prophecy, the Hopi will survive the apocalypse in an underground refuge and resurface when the time is right. Now this is considered, this is symbolic of the inner earth people coming out this is not about uh, death and destruction. This is very symbolic. We can't take these things literally. They're pro prophecies. They're myths and legends coming together to be lived out through our lives. Hopi prophecy, Hopi cosmology describes nine universes with inhabited worlds similar to Earth. 
Each of these worlds follows the same patterns of corruption, destruction, and rebirth, with the Hopi waiting out the apocalypse in underground caverns. The Hopi then repopulate each world with people who are pure of heart. According to this cosmology, three of the nine worlds have already undergone this transformation, with Earth being the fourth. The prophecy is specific about how the Red Star Casino will destroy civilization on Earth. When the end times come, the sky will turn blood red. Uh, and horrible creatures will walk the earth, some without souls and others with no recognizable form. This is symbolic of the nefarious ones that have been walking this earth, that have, you know, the psychopaths and the sociopaths that have created a world of suffering and pain for all life. For all life on the surface will have a grotesque perverted appearance, but the members of the Hopi will remain safe in their underground refuge. Now this is, again, symbolic of these nefarious beings that have taken over and this is the the caged human animal this is very symbolic there's an old book called the caged human animal where humans are like animals in a cage suffering anxiety all these things a being called the true white brother will then come to judge the hopi survivors if he judges them to be worthy of inhabiting the new world he will let them live. If he finds none among them upholding the ancient Hopi ways, he will destroy the earth. Similarly to other apocalyptic revelations, prophecies from other world religions describe similar events leading to the end of civilization. For example, the book of Revelations in the Bible contains the story of Armageddon in which the four horsemen of the apocalypse bring conquest, war, famine, and death to earth's inhabitants indigenous peoples all over the world tell similar stories based on the revelations of their spiritual elders likewise major world religions from hinduism to islam predict apocalyptic destruction and planetary renewal following a day of judgment understanding the prophecy in context Leading up to 2012, the Mayan prophecy of the long count calendar became a global fixation. People all over the world misunderstood this prophecy as a historical doomsday revelation. When the world didn't end in 2012, the news media declared a victory of reason over superstition, making the same mistake as the prophecy's believers. The mistake is putting mythology in the same category of it information as fact indigenous people such as the hopi don't hold a rationalistic western world view their prophecies tell the truth of the heart which transcends historical truth in the same way that the unconscious mind transcends the ego like the unconscious mind this heart truth is vital immutable and much more powerful than any specific historical fact the Hopi prophecy of the Blue Star Kachina points to an archetypal truth that is contained in every moment and not merely one specific point in time. So there we have it. This is a part of the prophecy. We're seeing all these prophecies come to fruition and we are seeing these, these powerful celestial alignments, signs, symbols, and synchronicities of this great shift of the ages. We must keep the faith for a better day you see it is up to us as way showers and guides of the new earth to show the way of the true path of the true path of life to walk the path with art just like the masters through all the lineages and timelines we must let go of all religious dogma superstitions and all these false belief systems for we are the ones that return we are the ascended masters that came into this realm the earth angelics to assist gaia and all her children of the sun in this great shift of the ages so stay in your heart no matter what you experience out here in the world around you find the peace within we do this through meditation through prayer through being in nature you know nature is our temple as i said in the introduction if you need to be grounded stand bare feet on the earth you know stay hydrated keep your body in a healthy state of awareness of presence and this is staying in the power of now the presence of this now moment and the power of silence and stillness within 
So we're going to put out, uh, be hopefully soon, after this video release, a uh, special meditation for the eclipse. There's uh, global meditations going on. There's world meditations, these collective uh, group meditations to help uh, to shift this whole uh, simulated reality into that which is true, you know, into our true path, you know, our true way we call the Tao. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you want to do more research, you can follow the links in the article that I post below uh, in the description. Uh, please leave a comment if you'd like to help support our work and mission and help us continue bringing uh, teachings like this to the world. You can either make a monthly pledge on our Patreon page, whitegoldeagle.com, or a one-time donation to our PayPal or Stripe at egolovecondor.com. Those links will also be in the description below. We appreciate each and every one of you. Have a most beautiful, blessed equinox, most sacred eclipse corridor portal as we navigate through these energies, through these portals, and these unknown energies as we shift this whole realm into the new golden age of enlightenment, peace, abundance and prosperity for all our good people of the new earth the eagle and the condor love you all namaste